Over 99% of the microscopic inhabitants of the sea are still not studied by science, even though many of them might be useful to treat cancer and other human diseases. Here on the shores of the Baltic, European scientists are getting ready to plunge into the study. Lots of marine organisms could be used to produce new medicines. But in fact, there are so many unexplored species that it's hard to even estimate how much we still don't know about them. The ocean harbors a tremendous diversity of microorganisms, and we only know a tiny part of what's there. Algae and sponges carry microorganisms that protect them from environmental threats. Up to 40% of a sponge's biomass is bacteria and fungi, representing a large biodiversity of microorganisms, which we can isolate in the laboratory to produce bioactive compounds. So we've got the sponges, now how do we turn them into medicine? In the lab, researchers culture a fungus from the sample. The fungus naturally produces biochemical compounds that could kill other cells, such as cancer. We have to recreate the right conditions in the lab for these microorganisms to produce the compounds we need. They need the right temperature, pH values, nutrients and biological environment. Spectrometry focuses on compounds that haven't yet been studied. If they have bioactive properties, they could be used in medicine. Fungi can be very beneficial for health. Penicillin is perhaps the best known example, but there also are some strains of marine fungi which are active against cancer cell lines. To test for bioactive properties, isolated compounds are mixed with live cancer cells and indicate a liquid that changes color if the tumor cells die. If the compound kills the cancer cells in these mini-tubes, the color changes from blue to pink. That way we can find out which compounds have anti-tumor effects. So far, researchers have isolated hundreds of new fungal strains, screened thousands of extracts and sequenced three genomes, narrowing a selection of candidates for future clinical studies. If you look back a few decades, cancer was a major threat to humans. But today we're developing new approaches to treating cancer. We can use proven methods and we keep improving them. And I think we're going to make a lot of progress in the coming 10 to 20 years.